What will the writing of history look like when the definition is shared equally by men and women? Will we devalue the past, overthrow the categories, supplant order with chaos? No, we will step out under the free sky. We will observe how it changes, how the stars rise and the moon circles, and we will describe the earth and its workings in male and female voices. We now know that man is not the measure of that which is human, but men and women are. This insight will transform consciousness as decisively as Copernicus's discovery that the earth is not the center of the universe. So says Goethe Lerner, and so say I. Change is coming, and it's terrifying to give up the performance we hold so dearly as traditional and righteous. The fault of tradition as a whole is not the remembering, but whose memories are accepted as reality. It is the phenomenon of women never being able to tell the perception of women never being able to tell a full truth. Beginning with our origin tales, shame and delusion have been the condition of woman since the beginning of time. In Greek mythology, we see this with the tale of Cassandra. A god seeking her favor gives her the gift of prophecy. When she denies his sexual advances, instead of taking the gift back, he curses her. So that when she prophesies, no one will listen so that when she tells what is to come as she knows it to be, it will fall on deaf ears. Nothing she says will be counted as truth as everything she knows, predicts, and shares unfolds. And this is just mythology. But more recently, it took over 100 women's testimonies for Dr. Nassar to be held accountable for his molestation of young girls, even though a handful of women had spoken up well before the trial. Since the beginning of time, shame has been the condition of woman. Cassandra speaks, but no one listens. Now it is our time. It is our time to take responsibility as a culture and as individuals for our failings, for how we've truly failed ourselves and each other by neglecting to realize we're failing together. Gloria Anzaldua says the ability to respond is what is meant by responsibility, yet our cultures take away our ability to act, shackle us in the name of protection. We are shackled to the train of thought and systems of oppression we have assigned to women and sexuality. We can show you your soul in the reflection of our eyes. If you can believe the voices of millions, if you can believe your women. Most of my life I've paid attention and watched these boundaries, men and women enforced around girls, these insignias of shame. Women keep breaking through boundaries only to see recycled limitations being put into place and held back together with shame. We won't let our blood and tears be the glue anymore. It's time to strip off our shame. As a student in my 20s, I don't know how you all have been funding your education, but I've heard of OnlyFans. And for those of you who haven't, OnlyFans is a brasserie of nude content, an online platform of virtual sex work for amateurs and professionals alike, go-go dancing, stripping for some creators, porn. OnlyFans is only the tip of the iceberg. The reality is that we as women, young and old, are exploiting and commodifying our sexuality and bodies, using sex work to fund an overpriced and undervalued education is a much more mainstream phenomenon than media might lead us to believe. I was valedictorian of my high school. I worked three jobs to save for college. When I got the chance, I still couldn't afford to go. I turned to sex work and more specifically, stripping. And I've taken classes here with women I know only as diamond or sapphire. When I started stripping, 
the women I bonded with, you know who you are, and I'm talking to you now. You were some of the most authentic friendships I made in my life, the strongest women I had ever known. And I won't let anyone make less of us. You see, as a woman, sex and shame have been interchangeable in my life. It wasn't until recently that I've come to the understanding that the best way to strip off my shame and your shame and our shame is to remove its pretense from my life. To better express our united values is to regard the culture of shame as a train of thought whose goals they need to be better articulated. I want to ask, why? A question I've asked since I could string sentences together as a toddler, this incessant asking of mine that's driven my father to the brink of insanity. Why? 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 Why is sex work as an industry thriving if culture tells us it's simply a bottomless well of mutual pain? Culture is diseased. Culture's toxicity towards women and sex can be undone only by connecting and sharing stories without wearing those experiences as a badge of failure. We can hypersexualize women or we can put them as figureheads, but can we be honest? Can we show compassion for one another, lay ourselves down? so that we may spare suffering for our daughters, for our children, for those that will come after us, for those that stand beside us. Progress, as I see it, is to understand that forward together requires a connection of our individual story to our mother's story and your neighbor's story and my story and to all the women and people who have been denied this compassion, who have felt this shame. A collective warning of how in the cultural perception of my failings, I see shame's failings as well, and how I want to grow together. In my time as a dancer, I was quickly made aware that stripping is an act of taking off my clothes. That part was obvious. What surprised me is that my eyes strip off the mask of the stranger. Let me explain this to you. Human beings desperately want to be seen. Why did men come there? Men came to experience pleasure. Men came to us and wanted to talk about their life, their wife, their job, their hockey league, how they've let down their children. You have a higher chance of a better dance with your money. When my body was on constant display, I learned something about vulnerability and physical beauty. I think all of us knew something that to be beautiful is powerful but to know the language of desire can make up for more than a few warts. Couple this with a knowledge that the condition of masculinity is agonizing loneliness, not lust, and you begin to unravel an age-old dichotomy of shame and blame. Why is it that sex and the power of women's bodies require such policing by men, women, and society? Why does my body make me a liar and inferior? My friends are college students, high school students, some are business owners and nurses, leaders in their communities. An astounding percentage of these women have been drugged or raped or molested or assaulted mentally and emotionally and physically. And instead of a fury of justice, our stories I have watched be overly interrogated, dissected, called hysterical, delusional, and attention-seeking lies. These women, we are of sound 
moral character, so long as we do not question the hierarchy of power or call for intimate justice. This sounds a lot like the tale of Cassandra. Why is my reality called a lie and illusion of emotion? Pain is not gendered. Manipulation is not gendered. But this mistrust of reality most certainly is. So now I ask another difficult question. Why is it that the worst thing the girl from your hometown can be is a stripper? Because... You're acknowledging her sexuality, her ability to commodify and manipulate her sexuality. And I understand the threat of knowing the woman who strips because your partner might feel entitled to eye her tits like he does every other woman. Or because maybe sex is sacred to you, rightfully so. And you could never imagine exploiting your sexuality and your body Maybe you could never imagine being seen in that way and still feeling respectable. I understand and I honor your fears. But if your partner is constantly ogling women, have a vulnerable conversation about sexuality and desires. If you're desperately ashamed of your sexuality, you need to talk about that. If sex is sacred, I honor that. Mine is as well. If you're unsatisfied and it manifests in a constant hate and judgment, maybe give each other an orgasm. And now, sex is not the answer to everything. But let's quit encouraging hysterics because we're ashamed to admit who we are and what we need. We are all hiding our whole experience of life. How much sharing is too much? Mothers deny the abortions they've had. Leaders can't tell of the abuse they've stayed in for years. Daughters keep hidden the story of their rape. Fathers won't articulate the psychological and physical beating of their fathers. It feels like war. When our life experiences are simultaneously held prisoner, guard, and ultimately executioner, it is social conditioning that places blame on the narrative of pain in the form of humiliation and shame. It's the lack of empathy and compassion, the anonymity of the human being. I became a stripper because I couldn't afford college. I was chasing money to chase a dream because that's the nature of the society we've accepted. I was a stripper because Universally accessible, education is not a reality, and it ought to be. Our pain, our suffering, and even further, our resilience is our common ground. If art is resistance, if literature is resistance, so too can the authentic and explicit offering and realizing of our experiences be. Men, I won't encourage the toxicity any longer, but I want to heal the pain together. We can't hold your feelings anymore. We see your pain and we're consumed by it. You need to take it back. That's what we need from you. Know that women are no strangers to change, to pain, to the force of new life and death. We'll help you push through it. We'll slow your breath and wipe your sweat. Women, human beings that have felt the fear of being powerless, know that humiliation is a more intense feeling than either happiness or anger. Our desire to be a part of the community that rejects us is felt more deeply in our psyche than our desire to avoid dying our will to live. I understand your fear of speaking your truth, but you are brave and you are not alone. When I was simultaneously Kaylee and Bella, I fell in love with a group of women with dreams 
and fetishes and fears that saw each other and didn't flinch, but instead embraced one another and taught each other and brought big spenders to the stage when a sister was dancing and warned one another. It was a family where Easter dinner prayers were said as toasts were made, as body cheers were sung. We absorbed one another and knew that to give in to shame, to shame one another, is to cut ourselves open and bleed slowly. It turns out it's not just men, but the human condition is one of agonizing loneliness, of wanting to be seen as you are. Shame is the drain of progress. Love is sweet labor. I did it for my daughter, and I'll endure it for you too, because change is coming if you can believe your women. Thank you.